So this is our last part of Chapter 53's lecture in PowerPoint, and we're talking about exponential growth rate. So essentially, we have exponential growth rate when we have populations that don't have limiting factors. For example, when we have a population that is almost extinct, like these African elephants, and they're introduced to a new environment, and they're rebounding from a catastrophe. And one of the characteristics of an exponential growth rate, when you graph it, is you get this very characteristic J-shaped curve. Um, so another example of this type of exponential growth rate that you're going to find is when we have introduced species, or what we call invasive species. So again, when there aren't limiting factors in the environment, that are going to affect the growth rate of the introduced species, for example, the zebra mussel here, then we get exponential growth rate. And we all know that invasive species have a lot of de detrimental effects. Um, they tend to be, by introduced or invasive species, they are non-native, um, they've been transplanted, um, and they grow exponentially because they don't have the same um, predators or parasites. Um, they don't have the diseases or the competition that the native species have. And so they outcompete the native species. And when we get that, they reduce diversity. When you have that kind of exponential growth, um, it causes a real uh, challenge to the biodiversity of an area. Some of the examples we have of um, invasive or introduced species are the African honeybee, the gypsy moth, the zebra mussel, and purple loosestrife, which is this type of plant that you see here, also known as kudzu. So when we're looking at exponential growth rate, um, we're generally dealing with an R max, a growth rate that's at its um, maximum rate of increase. Um, so it's denoted there with that R max. Um, we say the definition of it is the maximal instantaneous rate of increase per capita. Um, your book also uses R, I, N, S, T there with the, that I've shown um, at the end of that title. Um, so that is also used um, to denote that maximum R max. So things like E. coli that have, are very short-lived organisms will have a relatively high R max value because they have such short lives. Um, they need to have a very rapid growth rate in their population. But organisms that have longer lifespans, like humans, have very low R max values. So the R max again is going to be influenced or actually calculated based on the birth rate and the death rate per head or per capita under optimal environmental conditions. So this next graph shows two different populations that have different growth rates. You know, you can see these are both J-shaped curves, so they're both exponential growth rates, but one is much steeper than the other. And the reason for that has to do with, when we look at the formula, the growth rate is equal to the instantaneous um, growth rate, or the max growth rate, which is here 1, and here it's 0.5, times the population size. And so that's how we end up with these different um, shapes of the curve, or not actually shapes, but slopes of these curves. So now we don't normally have unlimited growth of a population. So we don't normally get exponential growth rate. Instead, we get what we call logistic growth rate. Because populations cannot continue to grow exponentially, or they'll outgrow their environment and the resources available. And so what we normally, this blue line would show exponential growth. Normally what we're going to see is this S-shaped curve, which is the logistic growth. So with logistic growth, you can still have this rapid exponential growth, 
but at some point it levels off. Um, and where it levels off is what we call the carrying capacity of the environment, or the K value. And in this case, it's an actual number. When the population size reaches 1,500, and actually, I'm, doesn't really, I guess it's just 1,500 individuals in this example. Um, when it actually reaches that number is when we had this actual leveling off. So the carrying capacity is 1,500. K equals 1,500 in this particular population. And it has to do with this population size, the N, approaching K. This is the number of generations, and this is the N value. So as N gets closer and closer and closer to the K value, then we get this leveling off or no growth here. The slope becomes zero. So the logistic model describes how a population grows more slowly the closer it gets to that carrying capacity, or K, which is the maximum population size the environment can support. And this is the more realistic model that we usually see in nature. That K value, of course, is going to vary with the abundance of the limiting resources, whatever they are. And those resources are called the K-selected resources, or K-factors. So those limiting factors can either be density-dependent or density-independent. So the ones, that are the ones that are more linked to the K value are the density-dependent ones. Because, again, if you think of this just logically, the closer the population gets to its carrying capacity number, which is its K value, then that means the more dense the population is becoming, the more susceptible it is to these factors. And so these factors actually serve to help a population's growth level off. So things like competition for food, for mates, for nesting sites, um, the effect of predators, of parasites, of pathogens and disease, all of those things are factors that are called K factors because they affect the carrying capacity of that population. Things that will affect a population, whether it is exponential or um, logistic are density independent factors. These are things that we call R factors because they affect the rate of growth in any population, whether it's growing exponentially or logistically. And those are things like the amount of sunlight if it's a plant, um, the temperature, the rainfall, like right now in our drought, it's affecting all plants, whether they are K-selected plants or R-selected plants. All are being affected by the lack of water. So density-dependent factors, again, competition for resources, disease, predation, toxic waste, intrinsic factors, some of the behaviors of the um, population, um, territoriality, which again goes back to competition. And you need to know these different types of factors. So this is just something showing density-dependent regulation due to predation. So you should pause this and take a look at the graph. Again, you need to be interpreting graphs. And this graph can, I think, be found in your textbook, if I remember correctly. Um, so take a look at it, study it, be able to interpret graphs always, always, always in this course. When we look at logistic growth, um, we use a slightly different formula because in the case of logistic growth, we need to take into account the carrying capacity of the population. And so we are going to introduce that K value into our formula. So the rate of growth is going to be determined by the per capita rate of growth times the population size and then we're going to factor in what the carrying capacity is minus whatever the population size is divided by the carrying capacity. 
So essentially what we're introducing here is this k minus n over k, which is going to allow us to factor in how close is our population getting to the carrying capacity. So if n is getting close to the carrying capacity, then we are going to have a halt to the population's growth, which is what this is right here, the population growth value. So this is just stating what I was just saying. When n is small compared to the k value, so when the size of the population is small compared to the k value, the term k minus n over k is close to 1, and then the per capita rate of increase approaches the maximum. But when n is large compared to the um, k, so when the population is getting close to that carrying capacity, then this value k minus n over k approaches 0, and the per capita rate of increase is going to be small. And then when n equals k, the population stops growing. So this is showing a table of how that actually plays out in a population. So as you, again, pause this and take a look at this and study it and make sure you can understand how to both put together a table like this and also interpret one. But what this is showing you is a hypothetical population of 1,500. Um, actually, its carrying capacity is 1,500, so its k value is given up there at the top. And it has a maximum rate of increase. Its r value is 1, and that stays constant in this population. And you can see as the population size gets larger and larger and larger, this k minus n over k value, the carrying capacity factor, approaches 0. And so then we have the per capita rate of increase also approaching 0. And then our population growth rate, as you can see, the actual number or of growth here that's occurring from year to year is going to um, actually increase until it gets to zero. So this is actually the number that's being, the individuals are being added to the population. Okay, so this is actually just showing the same thing. So I'm going to go on here. And this again is showing you the graph of this logistic model of population growth. And it just is pointing out again that you have the S curve versus the J curve. So carrying capacity, that K value, is the maximum population size the environment can support um, with no degradation of the habitat. And it's going to vary with the changes in the resources. So you can see here we've got this S curve. So we have a carrying capacity here of about, looks, this is thousands, of about 9,000, maybe 10,000 is the carrying capacity of this um, fur seal population. But here with these shrimp, um, we actually have a funnier graph, but we actually end up with our carrying capacity where we get more of this even um, zero slope portion of our line. Our carrying capacity is actually about 300 here, but we have this blip here that's going on, and I want you to think about what that might mean. This is another um, example showing two different populations. These are Paramecium, these are Daphnia, and this is an actual plot of um, the growth rate of this population, and we see that same kind of um, excessive growth here, and then this leveling out. So this shows you more clearly where the actual K value is for these populations. It's going straight across. It's about 900. And here it's about 135 maybe. And basically what to answer that question of what's going on right here is that some populations over, overshoot the carrying capacity of their environment. And then they have a decrease here, a negative slope, showing we have a negative R value. 
occurring here because we actually have a decreasing population size until